all points relay from Starfleet Command, Captain. Code one. Brace yourselves, it's time for another review on another piece of ancient computer gaming software thing. Today's subject matter is WinTrek, released for Windows 3.1. Yep, it's another one of these Windows 3.1 things. It's the third one already. Anyway, this is a Star Trek game for Windows, hence the name WinTrek. Yeah. Clever, huh? So you take control of the Starship Enterprise and your main objective is to explore strange new worlds to seek out new life and new civilizations and blow them up. You see, in the wonderful world of Wintrek, the Federation has apparently pissed off some of their space-faring neighbors, and as a result, they're all at war. As such, you're charged with the task of seeking out enemy starships and destroying a specified number of them within a specified amount of time or else you'll fail in your mission and that's it. No peaceful exploration, no diplomacy, no studies into the human condition, none of that stuff. You see a ship, you fire phasers and photon torpedoes and you blow the bastard up. It's really that simple. Well, not quite actually. You see, there's a bit of management that you have to take into account as you take command of your starship. You only have a limited amount of dilithium crystals and you need these crystals to power up your warp engines, your phasers, your shields. So every so often you have to make a stop at a star base, which will restock you on dilithium and photon torpedoes, because you have a limited supply of those as well. Not only that, but you have to use your sensors to find these invaders and bases and things. Making full use of your functions and managing them the right way is the key to success in Wintrek. And for a rather light game, Wintrek actually packs quite a bit of meticulous detail behind it. In regards to starship operation, I rather like the approach. Instead of raising shields and be done with it, Wintrek lets you dump as much energy to the shields as you'd like. The more energy used, the stronger the shields, but the less dilithium left over for everything else. Likewise, phaser also requires dilithium, and the more dilithium you use, the stronger your phaser beam happens to be. Photon torpedoes have to be aimed manually, and this takes a bit of doing at first, but it's manageable. Learning how to best navigate around this quadrant of space through your long-range sensors is almost vital to the success of your mission, and while it may seem like a good idea to make one huge warp 9 jump from one edge to another, it also takes up energy and leaves you stranded. And that's not a good thing. So there's an element of strategy that you have to consider here, and perhaps that's what's impressive about a game like Wintrek, which isn't a heavy game whatsoever. Its premise is ridiculously simple, but what goes into it is somewhat less so. But ultimately, it's not that hard to figure out if you actually take the time to learn everything, which doesn't take that long. Of course, the game allows you to save your progress, and there are multiple levels of difficulty, which is rather nice. The visuals of Wintrek are nothing to write home about. In fact, just watching the game, it doesn't seem very exciting. All it really is is a bunch of windows over an overlay of sorts. But what it lacks in visual pizzazz, it makes up for in clarity. Everything looks like what it should. It doesn't feel jumbled or confusing. You know what everything is, and you know, it's outside of the long range sensor, but that's easy to figure out, a bunch of numbers. Display panels are simply drawn, but works well enough. The small icons representing the various starships and the short range sensors have some minor animation. They look fine for the most part. There's really not a whole lot to say in this regard. It's a very minimalist looking game, but uh, it is what it is. And stuff. Sound clips are merely rips from the original Star Trek series, most notably the weapons fire and the computers processing, among other things. Although I did notice one or two sound effects ripped from Next Generation. Okay, I guess you gotta work with what you had at the time. There's only a couple instances of music in the entire game, again, ripped from the original series. To the game's credit, they sound fairly clear, but they also have a hint of white noise-ish. You know, they sound kind of rough. That's apparent from a lot of older sound clips from 20 plus years ago, I guess. Not a big deal, you barely notice at times. Despite its minimalist feel and design, Wintrek is actually a fun little game that holds up quite well after all these years. It's not a deep or involving game, nor is it really intended to be. It's a game that takes up very little time to pick up and play, and it could last for quite a little while as well. It was originally a shareware title, but is now as freeware. So yeah, Wintrek. Game was fun 20 plus years ago, and it's still a joy to play today. If you get the chance, look this one up and give it a go.